Like the path of the healthy person or the path of the fuck off. Like this is not like your body is like a race car that you can juice up yourself. Like you can add the fat tires, you can add the improved suspension, you can beef up the horsepower in the engine. You could do all that yourself, or you could just choose to have this shitty body that's always falling apart on you because we're essentially ecosystems. Uh, uh, is there advice you can give to people, to young, to young kids that are living through a shitty situation of any sort, a tough life? Find a thing you like. Try to find a thing that you really enjoy. Try to find a thing that you're passionate about. Like an activity. Yes. For me, early on, it was drawing. It was uh, illustrations. It was uh, comic books. I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. And then it went from uh, comic book drawing and illustrations to um, martial arts. So, But it was uh, just another thing that I was very, very passionate about. And that was my vehicle out of my dilemma. That was my vehicle out of my my own anxiety and trauma and my own issues and insecurities and find something. Find a thing that you genuinely enjoy because getting good at things you genuinely enjoy is extremely beneficial for young people because it lets you know that like Everybody thinks they're a loser. Every young person thinks they're a loser. At least a young person in the situation I was at. I, I didn't know I wasn't a loser until I started winning, until I started doing martial arts. Martial arts taught me that like, I could get better at stuff, that it wasn't, I wasn't really a loser. I just was someone who was like in a fucked up situation. But you could channel all that energy that you have as a young person into something and get better at it. And then all of a sudden people admired me. I was like, this is crazy. So I went from being someone who was incredibly insecure and basically a failure to someone who was really successful at this one thing that was very dangerous. And that gave me immense confidence and also a real understanding of the direct correlation between hard work and success. And a uh, kind of understanding that you're not a loser. Right. That there is some... A diamond in the rough. Yeah, and also an understanding that you can't listen to people. Because even my parents didn't want me to do martial arts. They didn't want me to fight. They didn't want me to do stand-up. It's like you, you have to understand like who you are. And then in the face of other people's either criticism or you know lack of faith in your ability to succeed, you push through and there's great benefit in that. And then you realize that, that you can kind of apply that to other things in life. You can apply that to critics. You can apply that to social media commentators. You can apply that to a lot of things. Okay, what about uh, young people in their 50s? <laughs> can you give advice to, like, imagine you're sitting, you're sitting back, probably still here in Texas, in your 90s, looking back. What advice would that guy give to you today? Or, like, people, you know, People that have done some shit in their 50s, you've gone through a hell of a life. There's potentially some incentive to settle down. you got a great family to relax. Um, but maybe there's some incentive to still do epic shit, still be David Goggins running in the middle of the desert, screaming yeah. shit into a camera. If you're David Goggins, you have to be David Goggins. I don't think there's a path. For that guy that exists at this stage of his life other than that do you think he'll be 70 and still screaming yes a hundred percent hundred percent if david and i are alive <laughs> we're, both, we're both 70 he's gonna call me up and say stay hard motherfucker <laughs> guaranteed guaranteed so, yeah. so lean into whatever the fuck you are at this point well if you're enjoying it but if you're not enjoying it rethink your life Try to figure out why you're, why you're not enjoying it. You still think it's possible to shift things in your 50s? Yeah. If you're alive, you can get better. No yeah. matter what. Yeah, no matter what. If you're alive, you can shift things. I mean, if you're 90 years old and, you know, you have a, a month to live, you can apologize for the things you think you did wrong and maybe r sort of reconcile and, and shape relationships that you have with the people that are around you better so that they, they feel differently about you after you're gone. Yeah, I, I always love people in their 70s who are like like getting back into dating or something like that. Yeah. And I was just, watching a video about a woman who's in her 60s who just started powerlifting. Nice. Yeah. And same with jiu-jitsu. You see people get into jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, white yeah. belt. White belt, that's like 70. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, if you're alive, you can get better at stuff. And I don't think people are happy if they don't have puzzles and complex tasks and things that are interesting to them, whether it's an art project or whether it's uh, learning something completely new like stand-up comedy. Like, doing things that are difficult is, it, it, it's as much of a nourishment of the mind as food is a nourishment of the body. I think you need things that, that are puzzling to you, where you have to find your own human potential in the difficulty of the task. And, and work your way through things. At least for me, for me. I mean, I can only speak for me because I'm the only that I'm the only life that I've ever lived that I'm aware of. And in my life, that has been a uh, 100% constant. I I am a very happy person, and I have never had a moment where I'm not doing difficult shit. Yeah, ever. Uh what matters most is how well you walk through the fires. So you just keep starting fires for yourself to walk through. Well, they don't necessarily have to be fires, right? Because fires are, like, kind of out of control. Lukewarm. Uh, tasks. So tasks. Give tasks. Give yourself something, an arduous, difficult task where you're challenged. Challenged mentally and challenged physically. One well, of the great things about being challenged physically is it's also mental. The people that don't understand that have never really been challenged physically. People that think that physical challenges are just, like, just physical. It's just brute grunt work it's not it, it's uh, emotional intelligence it's understanding your desire to quit and to, you know conquering your inner bitch all that stuff is it's mental it's playing out inside your head and there's a mental strength that you acquire from that that you can apply to intellectual pursuits and the the people that don't think that are the people that haven't attempted them and there's uh, an air against people that only pursue intellectual exercises, only pursue intellectual things, and don't pursue anything physical. That the physical stuff is based, it's grunt work, it's primal, it's not necessary. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that they're... Lo I mean, obviously there's people like Stephen Hawking who have no uh, opportunity to do anything physical, right? His physical dilemma is keeping his... or was keeping his heartbeat... Your wife is incredible. You're in a relationship. What, uh, and you're married. You have a great family. What advice would you give, uh, to me and to others like me who are dumb fucks and, and have not found a. Well, you're a great guy. So this definitely doesn't necessarily apply to you, but be someone who someone would want to be in a relationship with. There's a lot of people out there that want a great partner. They want someone in a relationship, but why would someone want to be in a relationship with you? You know, maybe you, you bicker a lot. Maybe you're jealous. Maybe you, uh, maybe you lie. Maybe you, you know, maybe you're cruel. Maybe you're, you, you don't have a sense of humor. Maybe you're, you know, you're not kind. Like, what is, what is it about you that people would not enjoy being around or that people avoid? Fix that. But it's also, you gotta find the right person. There's a lot of people who self, they settle for sexy. Settle for hot. Oh, for, uh, yeah. They settle for the wrong person. Like you can get hot and nice. They're out there. Yeah. But don't get hot and mean. Hot and mean's not fun. Then you get Amber Heard. Yeah. You know. And then you and get hot. Try. Yeah. 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 You can be deceived by perfect symmetry. So you, you don't think it's a good idea to record your partner? I think you should private. record all conversations. The CIA's doing it, no matter what. I assume that every conversation I have is recorded. Because I'm pretty sure it is. Even when we had dinner with Alex Jones, he was recording. Yeah. I still remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know, know that I was recording. Yeah. He might, you know what? It would be funny if he is the CIA. Player. He could be. Could be. Um, <laughs> That'd be the but that's show. my advice about relationships is be somebody. And then also, like, find someone who you can grow with, right? You don't want to be with someone who doesn't share your, uh, your values. Someone. You don't want to be with someone who makes excuses. You don't want to be with someone who's lazy or who's spiteful. You want to be with someone who's like genuinely kind. That's one of the things that I really love about my wife. She's very smart. She works hard. 
She's like, she's a dedicated, disciplined person, which is also really nice. That's why one of the things I like the most about her. She's so nice. She's always smiling. And that energy is great. That yeah, I mean, you've seen us together. Yeah. You've hung around with us. She's fun. Yeah, she's, she's a lot great. of fun. Yeah, she makes you just feel great to be alive. Yeah. It's good to have people like that around you. She's happy. She's a happy person. She's happy to be around. That's the kind of people that you could have in your life as friends and as coworkers and as lovers and wives and husbands. You can find those people. They're real. And when you find those people, your life is better. Like to have a good tribe is very important. To have a good tribe of people, you know. And I think if there's anything that I'm very, very fortunate about, it's the the people that I'm around. So valuable to have quality people around you because it makes you want to do better because you admire the hard work these put people put in, like like Cam Haynes or Goggins or many of my friends. And people that are generous and people that are curious and people that are honest, they inspire you to do the same. And it's extremely valuable. It's one of the most, most valuable things is to surround yourself with positive, healthy, friendly, generous people. Find some difficult shit to do because that gets away a lot of the anxiety that you carry around in your body. A lot of the, like f difficult things make regular life less difficult. And that sounds so simplistic, but particularly physically difficult things. Because when you do things that are physically difficult, the strain of making yourself do those things, it's very valuable. It's not just valuable like exercise and fitness and martial arts and running and whatever you're doing that's really difficult. It's not just valuable in terms of like health and the way you look, but it's also valuable for your mind, maybe even more so. Because regular life can be confusing, and little things that go wrong and little problems that arise are exacerbated by the fact that you're not accustomed to dealing with hardship. So creating your own bullshit, whether it's through fucking some brutal kettlebell exercise or running up hills or something, is extremely valuable for you also, not, not just accepting the nuanced perspectives of other people, but also... Being able to navigate through this world with some sort of an understanding of just how complex it all is and how weird it all is and, and, and not be overly thrown off by every little dip in the road and pothole that you encounter. That's the real message. The real message is we all started from no I mean, we all had bullshit jobs. We all <laughs> felt like losers. But through time and effort, you build a stronger human. You build a stronger body, you build a stronger mind, you build accomplishments and will and momentum. And then you look back and you go, Hey man, I'm not washing tables anymore. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not washing dishes. I'm not cutting lawns. I'm not digging ditches. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a different person now, okay. but I used to be. That's the hardest part, right? Is yeah. to get out of that rut. Oh. When you ain't got shit and there's nothing going on to have faith then is so difficult to have faith when you're successful it's like yeah listen that she's been successful for a while of course you got faith <laughs> yeah just yeah. keep doing what you're That's doing easy. That's it's like easy you already got up the hill now you're just coasted you know you're just rolling down the hill everything's great the hard part is getting up that fucking hill especially if you got a dad you're hiding from especially if you feel like you're a loser or you never really had anything in your life that you could look back on and say hey i was really good at that you know, and there's yeah. a lot of people out there listening to this. There's so many people that are in that, that starting point. Like the people that come up to you and say, what do I, I don't know what to do. What should I do? How do I do it? Yeah. How do I get going? You're going to have to figure it out one foot in front of the other. Right. You're going to have to, you know, to find a thing and keep working at it and get better at it. That's one of the things that I like so much about martial arts. They let anybody in. And then from that, from learning how to do that, you get better. And then you realize, damn, I can get better at anything. The desire to get better. Yeah, that's for everybody. Just find a thing. Everything. And if you find a thing, well, like particularly martial arts, because you get belts and ranks, and then you can see how you're doing with opponents. But if you could just find a thing and work hard at that thing, you'll realize through that thing that you can get good at anything with time and effort. There's been many, 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 many days where I didn't want to work out. I just didn't feel like I had the energy, and I just forced myself. And I think there's very few people out there that know how to force themselves. That's a learned, yeah. that's a learned skill. That, that kind of discipline and focus, 
You have to have like real rigid requirements of yourself where you don't allow yourself to back out of things and you don't allow yourself to slack off. And I don't think people put those kind of requirements on themselves as if it's, um, it, it is a, a, a daily principle of life, like what you must get done. You know, you must brush your teeth, yeah, you must yeah. exercise for 45 minutes. And if you did that, I think you'd be healthier and happier and you, your body would perform more smoothly. And you, if you require your body to do things like that, I think it rises to the occasion. There are very few people that have that kind of discipline. So because of that, they come up with excuses. And excuses are a giant part of the problem. It's not simply a physical health issue. There's also mental aspects of it. And discipline's a big one. I just know way too many people who are weak mentally. And I, I, I can't I can't just chalk it off to only, you know, their physical, the, the way they physically feel. Because I felt like shit a hundred times. And then I worked out, and then I felt way better. It's just a fact of life. That's real. You know, you just got people don't know how to do that. And it's not, a, and if you're used to doing this, get in your car, sit down, drive to the office, sit down, go to the lunch, sit down, you know, go to the board meeting, sit down. Get in your car on, on the way home. Sit down. Get home in front of the TV. Sit down. Then go to the gym. Fuck off. They don't have any energy. You know, their, their body's not, their, their body's like, I don't have it in me to do this. <laughs> and I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think it's, it's a lot of it is the, the mindset. That's really what it is. It's like, I'm sure a lot of it is diet and a lot of that diet affects their physical health. But there's been many, many people that have just put their foot down and said, enough. I'm, I'm going to change my life. And they, they don't take any excuses, and they feel way, way better. Diet is most certainly a part of that. But there's also a discipline aspect. And these things are not mutually exclusive. They, they exist together. They're all together. There's, and they work symbiotically. The way you, your, your mindset affects the choices you make with your diet. And the mindset also affects the choices you make in terms of like whether or not you require yourself to exercise. And I think these are these are critical aspects that people like to gloss over or they like to make excuses about. And they get very angry if you don't accept those excuses. And that's a sign that they're trying to they're trying to enforce this standard and this idea and push it on you and give themselves an excuse. And it's one of the reasons why they get angry. It's one thing if someone has a legit physical issue like you do, but there's a lot of people who do not. They just have poor diet choices, they have a sedentary lifestyle. And they have the momentum of this sedentary lifestyle that's holding them back. They're, they're accustomed to being lazy. To give people this excuse, I don't have the energy to exercise. That is crazy to say. Can you walk to the fucking refrigerator? Yes. Well, you can exercise. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just walk around the block. There's, a, there's 80-year-old ladies who take yoga with me. They're, they're, they're fucking really old. And they're in there. They're, they're going after it. They could easily say, I don't have the energy to do that. But they don't. It's a mental attitude. They make a decision. You don't have to go to a CrossFit class and try to do the workout of the day. You don't have to go nuts and do clean and presses with 150 pounds. You don't have to do that. But you have to do something. Just get, get your blood moving. Your body has requirements. It wants to move. It really does. And when it does, you feel better. When you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat fuck. Because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that, if, that actually gets good at something. You, you get, there's got to be those days you push through. And they're, they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. I always tell my, I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah. But I, I always do. One of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work. Mm -hmm. And you, you got to, and Pressfield talks about that. It, 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 in the most concise and beautiful way. And he labels it like an enemy. He calls it resistance. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you have to sit down, you have to overcome resistance, and that the pro goes to work. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you have kids, doesn't matter what you, you're a pro, and you go to work. And that, and that just, it puts it in your head that this is what I do. 
This is what, and you have pride in that. And then when you are in front of that keyboard and you're, you're, you got, you look down the count, it says, I got fuck a thousand words today. I put a thousand words in you. Yeah. And yeah. you, you, you're doing the work. Yeah. And out of that work, gems blossom. Yeah. Little things, but you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog shit. So what? Show up again tomorrow. And tomorrow out of that dog shit, a flower will emerge. You never know. And that's the only way to develop real, like to to really develop your potential a hundred percent in anything, whether it's as an author or even as a martial artist, there's a lot of creativity in martial arts. To be a great striker, you have to be creative because you have to you have to develop patterns or execute patterns that are aren't going to be perceived. This idea that life is hard, something you're supposed to shield from them, it's so silly. And, you know, I've had this conversation with my friends because uh, everybody that I know that's interesting had a fucked up life. But but now we have kids, and the last thing we want is our kids to have a fucked up life. So we put our kids in these good schools, we live in these nice neighborhoods, everybody eats healthy, and there's no fucking domestic violence, and everybody seems, it's it's so different than all of our lives. And we were talking about it, me and Brian Callum were actually talking about it, like, look, we all had fucked up childhoods, and everybody we know had fucked up childhoods. And they're all interesting, but I don't want my kids to be boring, but I also want them to be safe. <laughs> so it's like, how do you, how do you approach that? I mean, I think you get involved. Well, what I've chosen to do is get my kids involved in martial arts and, 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 uh, and give them the opportunity to pursue difficult things and understanding that through pursuing these difficult things, like in accomplishing stuff, like you, you learn something about yourself. You learn that you have this ability inside of you to overcome. Get obsessed with life improvement. Find things that you enjoy doing that are difficult. Do them and get better at it. Seems so simplistic. It seems like a ridiculous, idealistic point of view, but it's effective. For some people out there that aren't feeling good, man, if you just fucking struggled more, you get over that struggle, you feel better. It sounds so simplistic, but I swear by it. I, yeah. I felt shitty myself and then forced yeah. myself to work out. And after I get out of there, I'm like, whoa, 100%. I'm fucking it's a 100% great. guarantee. It's hard for people to break momentum, too. Momentum that's good momentum or momentum that's bad momentum. When I get uh, like when I get on a good groove or working out all the time, I feel it. Like after I'm done working out, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to get in there again. I can't wait to work out again. That's the good momentum. But then there's that bad momentum, like you get injured or something like that, and you can't do anything for a couple of weeks, and then to, to try to get that kickstart that motor up yeah. again, it's the it's hard to get momentum. There's a lot of people that are eating shit food, and then by the end of the day, your body's in a crisis. Yep, yep. Your body's just processing all this bullshit. And if you're eating a big, like, bullshit lunch filled with nonsense, like, your body's got to process all that stuff. And so at the end of the day, yeah, you're going to lose your willpower. So, like, when 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock rolls around, you're going to be tired. But if you have a healthy lunch... And you know you're you're properly fueled, and then you also have positive people in your life. Everyone's motivated. By the end of the day, you're going to feel good. Whatever the fuck your thing is, just go and do it. Just force yourself to do it. And if you feel like shit because you ate lunch, then your lunch was you know filled with bullshit. Well then, hey dummy, don't eat shitty lunch tomorrow. Tomorrow try a nice salad. Yeah. You know, try a salad with some salmon and see how you feel then. You're like, hey, I feel way better today at six o'clock. Duh. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. your decision making will be better. Like they, people don't understand how significant it is. Like all these little decisions, they those are like the that's the path for the rest of your existence on Earth. And if you decide to go to fucking Cheetos chocolate chip cookie route, you're 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 just making a shit path. You're carving your fucking path through broken rocks and glass, and it's not the way to go. You know what else doesn't exist in a day to day life? What a place where it's okay to be a man. It's actually okay to yeah, be a yeah. man. It's okay to have man thoughts. Like yeah. everybody is so, so toned down and neutered. It's like human resources and, and corporate life has watered down people's natural behavior to the point where people are just dying on the inside, sitting in these fucking cubicles, rotting, yeah. just freaking the fuck out, having all these thoughts they can't entertain, having to pretend to be someone they're, they're not all day long, putting on this bullshit way of talking, this fake way of thinking. Everybody's got to subscribe to whatever fucking ridiculous policies their company wants to enforce. And you're just a robot, and you get out of there, and you just want to scream. Uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. But it's so illogical, because when you look at comfort, and you look at success and progress, and the eventual, the feelings of 
accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. Like discomfort and, uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life, or certain feelings in life, they're a massive massive motivators and they're they're amazing at at facilitating change and yet our instinct is to avoid those and just sit on the couch and watch some fucking reality show about dudes who make moonshine with our jaw open like it's it's bizarre and for me at least when i get when i get like really disciplined and really um i get really consistent with my workouts one of the things that I feel, I almost feel momentum. I feel like there's like a push behind me, like, all right, we're, you know, like after I get out of the gym, I have a really good workout. I'm like, yeah, now I'm doing it. I'm doing it all the time now, and I'm looking forward to the next time. And it makes that resistance much weaker, and it makes my motivation and my discipline much stronger. I think a lot of it is based on just the consistency. You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda and your body is just like, what in the fuck is this? We're supposed to be out in the fields. We're supposed to be walking up hills. We're supposed to be looking for animals or gathering vegetables. We're supposed to be doing all these things that our body's designed to do. We're supposed to be in nature. Yeah. And nature is like a medicine. Like it literally is a medicine to you. Like okay. people, people that go, you don't have to go hunting. You don't have to go fishing. Just go fucking hike, man. Just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out. You know, there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely, like, soul-filling. Mm -hmm. There's, like, something about, like, when I was in Colorado, and there was this um, this area of Boulder where you drive up one of these roads, and there was this area where you could park, and it was this incredible view, man. And these people just park and just go out there and just look. But you get there, and you park, and you go, Fuck. What is the meaning of life, mm. according to Joe Rogan? I do not think there is a meaning. I think there's many, many meanings of life. I think there's a way to navigate life that's enjoyable. I think it requires many things. It requires, first of all, it requires love. You have to have loved ones. You have to have family. You have to have friends. You have to have people that care about you, and you have to care about them. I think that is primary. Then it also requires interests. There has to be things that stimulate you. Now, it could be just a subsistence lifestyle. There's many people that believe and practice this uh, lifestyle of just living off the land and hunting and fishing and living in the woods, and they seem incredibly happy. Yeah. And there's there's something to be said for that. That is an interest, right? There's something, and there's a there's a, a direct connection between their actions and their sustenance. They they get their food that way. They're connected to nature, and, they, and it's very satisfying for them. If you don't have that. Uh, I think you need something that is interesting to you, pa- something that you're passionate about. And there's far too many people that get sucked into living a life where you're just doing a job. You're just showing up and putting in your time and then going home. But you don't have a passion for what you're doing. And I think that is, that's the recipe for a boring and very unfulfilling life. You mentioned love. If you could yeah. backtrack, what, uh, we, we talked about the demons and the violence in there somewhere. What's the role of love in this, in your own life? It's very important, man. And it, it, that's one of the reasons why I'm so, uh, I'm so interested in helping people. I, I'm very interested in people feeling good. I like them to feel good. I want to help them. I like, I like doing things that make them feel like, oh, you care about me. Like, yeah, I care about you. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Like, I want people to feel good. I want my family to feel good. I want my friends to feel good. I want guests to feel good about the podcast experience. You know, I, I am, uh, I'm a big believer in as much as I can to spread positive energy and joy and happiness and, and relay all the good advice that I've ever gotten. All, the things that I've learned, and if they could benefit people, and I find that those things benefit people, that actually improve the quality of their life or improve their success or improve their relationships, or I'm very happy to do that. That, that means a lot to me. The, the way we interact with each other is, is so important. It's one of the reasons why I like 
when someone gets canceled or you get publicly shamed, it's so devastating because there's all these people that negative, yeah. all this negative energy coming your way. And you feel it as much as you like to pretend that you, you're immune to that kind of stuff. And some people do like to pretend that you feel it. There's a, there's a tangible force when people are upset at you. And that's the same with loved ones or family or anytime someone's upset at you. Whether it's you a giant it. group of people or there's a small amount of people, that has an impact on you and your psyche and your physical being. So the more you can spread love and the more love comes back to you, you also create this butterfly effect, right? Because where other people start recognizing like, oh, you know what? He's nice to me. I feel better. And then I'm going to be nicer to people. And when I'm nicer to people, they feel better and I feel better. And it, and it spreads outward. And that's one thing that I've done through this podcast, I think, is I've, I've imparted my personal philosophy on, uh, in, in kindness and generosity to other people. Um, so th- as far as like, uh, the meaning of life, that's, that's a bit, without that, you have nothing. You know, one of the big, biggest failures in life is to be extremely successful financially, but everybody hates you. Everybody hates you and you're just miserable and alone and angry and depressed and sad. You know, when you, you hear about rich, famous people that commit suicide, like, wow, you missed the mark. You got some parts right, but you put too many eggs in one basket. You put too many eggs in the financial basket or the success basket or the accomplishment basket and not enough in the friendship and love basket. And there's a balance to that. And uh, when I talked about the violence and all, all that stuff, like that to me is me uh, understanding, recognizing that is me trying to achieve that balance. It's to like go kill those demons so that this boat is level. You know, because if it's not, then the boat is like this and then everything's all fucked up and every time we hit a wave, things fall apart. Balance that boat out. Figure it out. Like, know who you are. Some people don't have that problem at all. Some people, they could just go for walks and they're cool as a cucumber. I need more. You know, I need kettlebells. I need a heavy bag. I need, uh, I need the echo bike, you know, the air assault bike. I need some hardcore shit. And if I don't get that, I don't feel good. So I figured that out too. And that makes me a nicer person. And that makes my interactions nicer. It makes, it, 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 it changes the quality of my, my friendships, my relationships with people. Hey there. If you're enjoying our content, show some love. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned for more. Let's build something awesome together. Subscribe for more now.